Hey, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of game design, and I want to bring you through the second part of 3D animation for MakeHuman to mix a to Mixamo to Unreal Engine to have your very own oh slightly original original mesh um, animated using Mixamo and then brought into Unreal Engine. Okay, so we just downloaded a whole bunch of animations from Mixamo. And we had this original, um, I'd call it original, but it's, you know, Make Human made it. And so thank you to Make Human. Now we are going to go into Unreal Engine. Um, this is, oh, okay. Well, let's, let's go ahead and do this. You know what? I'm going to start this over from scratch so you can see how we go about doing that. Let me put this away. Let me put this away. You've done well. This is the Epic Games Launcher. And what we're going to do is go to the library. You know what? Let's just go ahead and launch 4.25.3. I'll update you later. So when you start a new Unreal Engine um, thingamajiggy, you're going to choose games, film, television, or architecture. It's all the same engine. It's just that they all have different templates for starting. You could see an old project up on the top here. We're going to choose games and we're going to click the next button. We are going to choose third person. Why third person, Brian? Well, because this is already set up with a um, with a camera that works with this character, this player character blueprint that is just going to work well with our animation. Okay, so that's why we're going to do that. Unreal Engine has some great templates to start with. And we're going to choose blueprints because I like blueprints. And then we're going to choose max quality, ray trace, disabled, desktop console with starter content. Sure, why not? I'm going to call this third person for vid. And I'm going to create that project and it's going to um, start. <clears throat> and so now here we are in the Unreal Engine project, third person. If we click play, I'm not going to click play. I'm going to click this little drop down arrow to the right of the play button. And I'm going to click new editor window. Why? Because it just pops up a nice little window. Oh, what is that little thing? I don't know. It's a question mark. So here we have this character that just runs around, jumps, and he has a landing, but I'm not going to set up a landing for my character. Let's go ahead and import things. On the bottom here, we have our content browser. That's normally where the content browser is. I have to click this button on the left below the green add new button so that I like so that I can see my hierarchy because I like seeing that hierarchy there. I do not love the breadcrumbs, but that's fine. It's up to you. I'm going to click the word content, and that is going to show me the top of the folder hierarchy. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go ahead and click a new folder called Farmer Bob. I think that's what I called him. That's Farmer Bobble. Uh, my son thinks the name Bob is just hilarious, so that's what we have here in my brain. Double click that, go into here, and this is where I'm going to import my first animation. Um, should I do something fun in front of you all? Should I import all of them together? No, I won't. I won't. Um, yeah, let's... No. Uh, make human. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go to the Mixamo Anims. Now, one of these has the mesh and the others don't. I actually... I'm going to pause it and see if I'm right. Okay, just as I thought, I was going to be wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and import my first one. Now, I am going to import the one with the mesh, right? That is a mesh skeleton animation materials. It's going to come with four different types of things. Actually, five, because it's going to come in with textures for the materials. So let's go ahead and select that idle. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Click OK. Now, by default, I don't know if I have to do anything. Um, it's checked to skeletal mesh. That's good. It means it's a mesh with a skeleton. Uh, it's going to import the mesh. Yeah, I, I want that. So if you downloaded your mesh for all your other ones, you would uncheck that. Because we already have the mesh, or, or we will once I import this one. So I, already, so I want this mesh. I want the skeleton. Geometry with skinning weights. 
Skeleton is going to be set to none because the only skeleton in here is the UE4 mannequin skeleton, and it 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 that's in the default this um, template. And guess what? The skeleton that Mixamo made. Remember, I had a skeleton in here. Let's see. It's probably under modeling. Uh, no, I don't remember where it is. Is it under pose skeleton? Yes. It's under Pose Animate Skeleton. Remember, it's the game engine. I, I put that there. And that is not the same skeleton that is that is by default with UE4. Um, so I'm going to set that to none. And by doing this to none, Unreal Engine is going to um, use that skeleton and create a new skeleton asset. Import animations, definitely. So I've got my mesh. I've got my skeleton. I've got my animation. The next thing I need is my materials. So what we're going to do is we are going to create new materials. I think that's all I have to do. Pretty sure. And I'm going to click Import All. And what it's going to do is going to import everything. I'm going to pause it. Pause that. So I do get an error, and it's just saying there's no smoothing group found in the FBX scene. Oh, well. I'll have to deal with that. Um, now this should have brought in all of the all of the materials. I'm not sure it's looking like that. Now what I'm going to do is you see all of these things here. These are materials. The spheres are materials. The squares are textures. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a uh, Bob material folder. And that's all of these spheres. They're all materials. And I'm going to drag these assets into there and move them there. And I'm also going to create a Bob Tex, Bob Tex folder. And that's for all the little squares here. Go into the Bob Tex move. OK, now I've got um, an idle animation, idle animation sequence, a physics asset, and a skeleton. Oops, this goes into the Tex. It's a square. So if I double click any of these, it opens up what UE4 folks call Persona. Um, persona is the, uh, as far as I can tell, people, because it doesn't say Persona here, but it's got the skeleton, it's got the mesh, it's got the animation here, and it's got the physics asset right here, which is kind of fun if you push the simulate button. Where are you, simulate? There you are. Booby dooby doo. There it goes. Okay, that's called Persona. All four of these things are linked in the same window. Now let's go ahead and import our, <clears throat> our other three animations. Remember, these are the small ones now. The falling, joyful jump, and the running. They're small because they have no mesh. And we can just click that. Look at that. It opens up to idle skeleton. That's actually what it's called because I had my um, mesh called... Um, idle, I downloaded idle. So now that skeleton is called idle skeleton. I always regret doing that every time. So do that and and I don't need anything else, right? So I'm just going to say import all. There we go. Yay! And now I can double click any of these, right? If I double click that new animation, hey, look it. I'm opened up to Persona and I have this anim animation sequence here on the top right and I have all of my idle anim, my joyful jumping, my running, my falling. Great. All four of those, that's exactly what I need. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I need to actually get this um, get this going. So what I'm going to do first is create a blend space animation. I'm going to go I'm going to right click in my content browser. Go to animation, blend space 1D. This is how I'm going to go from idling to uh, running. And so I'm going to click Idle Skeleton. It has to base this blend space on a skeleton. And of course, it's the one I'm using. Okay, here we go. I'm going to call this um, BS underscore or farmer, bo farber, farmer Bob underscore um, BS for blend space. Double click that, farmer Bob BS. And this is going to be based on speed. And so what you see here below Farmer Bob is a, um, it's really just a one-dimensional graph. It goes from the left to the right. Why is it so tall then? I don't know. Would it make more sense like this? Yes, it would. But that's not how it was. 
I'm going to untwirl the horizontal axis. We are going to call this speed. It has a need for speed. And if it's going zero, it's zero. That's good. And was it? what is its greatest value? Let's go ahead and put this uh, to 375, I think. Um, and the target weight interpolation, a lot of words. We're going to set that to 5. And that's going to interpolate our animations pretty well, as far as I know. Um, OK, so that's, OK, so this 0 under speed minimum axis set this 0 value to 0. And over on the right, our maximum axis value uh, set that to 375. Good. Splitting up into 4 is fine. And let's go ahead now. And, and so what happens is, if we we're going zero miles an hour centimeters per second, right, versus 375 centimeters per second, right? So one is slower, one is faster. Hey, if you have an idle animation, do you think it would be when he's going zero centimeters per second or 375 centimeters per second? You got it. It's when it's going zero. So we're going to drag idle animation from, from the asset browser into here on the left. Okay. And now he's just going to be idling until we drag running all the way to the right. It snaps to these divisions. That's why the number of divisions is so important. And if we make a mistake and accidentally drag running here, we can always change that later. And this little green bar here goes from idle to running. Yay. Let's go ahead and save this. There's our blend space, but now we have to make an, an animation blueprint. So we're going to right click in our content browser, go to animation, uh, animation blueprint. Uh, all we need to do is click the skeleton again, just like the blend space. So I'm going to click the idle skeleton, say OK. And I'm going to call this farmer bob underscore anon bp. There we go. Double click that. And we're going to open up the animation blueprint, which consists of two things, an event graph and an anim graph. The event graph is going to drive the anim graph. Let's go ahead and click on the anim graph. And what I want to do is create a state machine that drives output pose. OK, so it has to know what state is this character in. And so I'm going to right click in this anim graph and type in new state or add new state machine and set it up there. It's working. It should work. But there's nothing in the state machine. So let's go into that state machine by double clicking. And what we're going to do here under entry is let go and say add state. Well, that state is going to be idle to run. Guess what's going to go on in here? We are going to double click it, and we are going to drag that blend space into here drag it into there and now we are going to compile that and if farmer bob is going 0 centimeters per second he's standing still if he's going 375 centimeters per second you can compile that he's going to be running okay cool what we're going to do is let's set that to 0 again we're going to drag let's compile that we're going to drag a little node off of the speed thing here let go and promote that to a variable and we are going to call that variable, hey, let's call it speed. Yes, compile that, save it. OK. And this is going to be a float value. Yay. Shall we go ahead and hook that up? Yes, we should. Let's go to our event graph. Let's figure out what Farmer Bob's speed is. Um, we are going to, first thing we have to do is figure out if this is valid. Why? Just because we'll type in is valid. And we'll use the question mark is valid. And we are going to hook the execute up here. And if it's valid, OK, then we're going to continue. We are going to off of return value. Um, oh my gosh. Yes, we are going to get velocity. And from there, we need to find its vector length. So we're going to type in vector, vector length. And this is actually the speed. So what we're going to say is we are going to uh, drag this speed here and set it. And if it's valid, it's going to set the speed to the vector length. 
And that's where we're going to have to stop it right now. And in the next video, we will continue on.